Hello and welcome Ultimate Fighting Championship fans. I'm Kevin Ripa and this is my Sans 3 Minutes Max. Today I want to talk about the seizure of cellular and portable devices. Uh, many of us know how to seize computers and how to do evidence intake on them, but phones for a long time have been uh, a very hit and miss process. A lot of people aren't quite sure how to handle it, and one of the things we see very often is that the first thing that uh, someone who seizes a phone wants to do is to turn it off. Uh, bad idea. That should not be the first step you take. Uh, now let's look at a little bit of, of phone stuff and we'll get to see why it has to be handled differently than with a computer. So you wanna grab a phone and somebody says, yeah, go image me that phone or that, that uh, iPad or whatever. And it's not like a computer. Most computers are all standard devices and all get done kind of the same way. Not so when we're talking about phones. A lot of the differences with phones and tablets, well, first of all, you can't physically acquire most devices. Uh, you can do a lot of logical acquisitions and advanced logical, but certain special things have to happen in order to do a physical acquisition, and in many cases, you won't have the ability to do that. You can't image a phone when it's off like you can with a hard drive. You can't write block a phone, and you cannot let the device communicate with the network while you're doing all of this stuff. So how forensically sound is your process? Well, you have to make sure that it is you know, repeatable, documentable, there's a lot of paperwork on it, people have done it. In other words, you need to be able to explain why you did what you did. Well, when that thing gets to be in your possession, that phone, the first thing you should do, isolate it from the network. In other words, put it into airplane mode. This is not the time to practice on stuff. Now, let's talk about an iPhone, for example. Usually you're going to swipe from the bottom up, but that's not every time. You have to test with various devices because different iOS's and different hardware change how the process happens. Then you're going to select the airplane mode button. And when you do that, make sure that all of the other communication style buttons go gray. What about on an Android device? Well, in many cases, you're going to swipe downwards. Then you might have to swipe downward a second time to get more options. You're going to select again all the communication options and make sure that they're grayed out. Uh, on an Android, you're going to get a verification about airplane mode usually. Sometimes you have to swipe from right to left to get even more options. Like what? Turn off auto sync. The last thing you want is someone to uh, auto sync to an empty repository of some kind. Remember, an important thing here is the fact that uh, when you turn a device back on that you haven't placed in airplane mode, it is communicating with the network long before you're able to interact with it and unlock it. So that's why we put it in airplane mode rather than turning it off first. Oh, another quick one. Don't remove the SIM card anymore for a variety of technical reasons that are beyond the scope of this three minutes max. So that's it. In the meantime and in between time, another episode of three minutes max.